Let me present um, Isidora Ilic. I just need to connect. As she's connecting her presentation. Um, it's a great pleasure to have Isidora back. We've, uh, some of us had a chance to learn a little bit about her work from the presentation in 2013 as part of the summer school documentary in the digital century. But for those who didn't have that opportunity, it's my pleasure to say a bit more about Isidora, who is a video artist, writer, and cultural worker based in Belgrade. She studied comparative literature and literary theory at the University of Belgrade and women and gender studies at Belgrade Women's Studies and Gender Research Center. She's also a part of an artist duo, Doppelganger. She works together with Boško Prostran. And their work deals with the relations between art and politics and the regimes of moving images and modes of their perception. So Doppelganger, in that sense, is really using the tradition of experimental film and media and works with installations, drawing very much on the moving image archives that um, they've assembled. And for that work, that's been shown um, really uh, widely, both, art, both, both at art venues and at film festivals, they have received a political award in 2015. The talk of Isidora's presentation today is in search of the repressed images. And if it's all set, then I'm happy to pass the word over to you. Should I use this one? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Oksana, for introduction and organizing organizers for inviting me to present. Um, my role was uh, to be the last and in a way connect two panels since uh, I will speak from the position of artists uh, who use uh, archives. Um, so I'm going to present fragments and title, an art and research project from the artist duo Doppelganger that includes Boško Prostan and myself. The works created within this project since 2011 deal with the politics of media images that were in a way instrumental in developing the historical narratives of uh, former Yugoslavia between the 1980s and 2000. This period represents a traumatic place of identity raptures for many generations, including authors, which means uh, those born at the end of the um, uh, 70s and the beginning of 80s. Uh, since the hi historical events which marked the end of Yugoslavia uh, were collectively witnessed through the media, memories of the last decades of Yugoslavia were for the most part constructed by television images. The personal memories which were mediated in this way represent the basis uh, of collective memory and thus participate in building the nation's historical narratives. In addressing that which was marginalized and uh, is ephemeral within the media-driven flux, the project fragments and title as a series of variously formatted uh, uh, media fragments examines the repressed images of the collective memory and of what was sidelined in the history. Politi uh, poetical articulation would be the following. Fragments and title are televised fragments, singular but collective. They depict the multitudes, not individuals, as subjects of history. They are dialectical multiplication of images, taking these of the, uh, to their utmost limits. They are cheap images. They are reanimated and not found footage. They demonstrate an effect as the possibility of political subjectivation of the proletariat. They are the allegory. They are a memory from the future. Rather than revising history, Fragments and Title attempts to challenge the narratives which emerge in the aftermath of historical events, first and foremost by focusing on the reasons, causes, and motives behind the breakup of the Socialist Federative Republic of Yugoslavia. The official reading posits this breakup as a singular historical event and not as a sequence of changes in social relations which contribute to it. It understands the process uh, as the logical conclusion of the unsuccessful communist project, which ended in a civil war and turned to capitalist ideology. The project fragments and title re-examines popular historical narratives. For growing up in the 80s and the 90s in Socialist Federative Republic of Yugoslavia, which then became the Socialist Republic Yugoslavia, 
The formative historical events of the space became a source from which our identities, first as children, then as adolescent, and our worldview were crystallized. Historical narratives about the end of Yugoslavia for the most part rest on collective memory of events in which most of population did not partake, to which we indirectly bore witness, predominantly through media communications. Paradoxically, it is these media images which are going to become the foundation of our personal and then collective memory, the basis on which we are going to build our subjectivities. These images will be treated as a documentary template for the creation of historical narratives. History and memory does represent the field of our interest within this project. What is that we remember and what is that remind us? Born and growing up in a socialist Yugoslavia, we looked on it as it was diminished to the level of ethnocentric communities. This shifting of two ideologies is presented as a gradual transition from one matrix to another, while in the lives of individuals it represented a shocking cut. The question we ask ourselves as a Yugoslavian and post-Yugoslavian generation is how did we and how do we still react to the variously opposing montages of memories to which we were and we are still exposed? Therefore, on the formal level, the first answer asserts itself. We must recognize the montages of memories as the sides of the cut and not as a transition. Keeping this in mind, we review and reinvestigate words and images from the past in order to respond to contemporaneity. The artistic procedure of appropriation and ready-made as the using of already existing images is a political act since it implies the possibility of the re-examination and reinterpretation of the past through the montage of various narrative and pictorial fragments. Within the memotechnics of our growing up, we begin the process of renewed subjectivation by spinning the time top, always in a singular and unique point of our personal archives. The personal memories are also the memories of the collective. In the first project of the serial, we researched the celebration of 600 uh, years of Kosovo battle, the famous speech of Slobodan Milosevic which took place at Kosovo on June 28, 1989, was performed in front of the thousands of people. The national television was streaming it. The event, as known as Happening of the People, is embodied in the image and the speech of Slobodan Milosevic. History regards it as a presage of the collapse of Yugoslavia and the bloodshed of the Yugoslav wars. What history fails to denote is a countershot to popular representation and the articulation of the people, official and mainly media memory censored both of these signifiers. So I will show you the way we used archive in our work. And this event.
So, <clears throat> the montages of memories are always related to the status and the origin of the image. What is the image like and which archive does it belong? The post-socialist and post-colonial transitions of national states give rise to new paradigms and renounce old ones, that is, socialist ones. So the gaps emerge in the archives. Due to technological impossibilities and political resistance, the abandoned film and TV images circulate on the internet. Uh, or are doomed to disappear. 
Today, no post-Yugoslav state cannot or does not wish to inherit TV images of the breakdown of Yugoslavia. Those remaining in semi-privatized state archives or public services are marginalized, unimportant, non-profitable. They become miserable, poor. Even in technical sense, their resolution, size, and sharpness become weaker. Images of collapse are collapsing. The TV format of direct broadcast, which was deemed to be television per se, was of utmost importance for the collapse of all socialist states, not only of Yugoslavia. In those years, the direct broadcast was supposed to open a public field for the struggle for representation of the respective historical moment between two ideologies, the old communist order and new liberal, democratic, and capitalist one. The images which nowadays freely circulate on the internet have their material origin in a recorded copy. Most images of the collapse of Yugoslavia were recorded on VHS tapes by citizens. At the end of 1980s, in circumstances of an open free market and strained ethnic relations, they obsessively recorded television programs in their homes on recently imported video cassette recorders. A large part of the new broadcast which is pre present today on YouTube was accidentally present preserved on a video cassette after one's favorite Hollywood spectacle was recorded for the home video collection. Today, it is possible to find any old Hollywood movie in various copies and formats, but a concrete new broadcast on an actual VH cassette and its possible YouTube stream may be the only preserved recordings of some event. When recalling important events, we take TV footage, which is the trace of an event and document contributing to creation of narrative. But the aim of the project fragments and title is not the forensic procedure of establishing the truth or finding the new document, which will either confirm or refute the historical narrative. We are interested in confronting the process of remembering according to which something remains forgotten. George Agamben thinks that the forgotten as something that cannot be preserved as memory requires a different approach. The act of forgetting is force which operates in a different way to that of remembering and cannot be accumulated as knowledge. The forgotten does not allow itself to be remembered or commemorated. It remains with us and through us it is forgotten. In, it is in this way that in, in exists as unforgotten. After repeated readings, we present TV images as fragments from the field of forgotten, translating them into memory for the future. In the German language, the fragment, thus fragment, means incompleteness or aphorism. In line with Agamben's conception, these TV fragments exist within the domain of the forgotten. They do not aim for uh, commemorativity. They are singular but represent multitudes and rely on collective memory. As unforgotten, they are what is unsaid and thus unnamed. They are the collective sediment which we keep within ourselves. Fragmented images of our oblivion, of our forgetting, are not something which are supposed to be found again. As unforgotten, they are with us all the time repressed. As invisible accomplice, they exist impressed in the images we remember, but which underwent ideological filtration. These are television images which we perceived, uh, perceived collectively, but which are physically marginalized. Uh, the procedure applied in the work Fragments and Title is not a mere translation of television into film or the document into fiction. It's a rather actualization of the present to unforgotten images of the past. The translation does not relate to realism nor to credibility or the truth, but rather to relationism, making things present and thus to the transformation of social, historical, and material relations of the present moment. I'm finishing with this uh, another work, it's just a minute, and it's a material we research upon the uh, Better Life, which was a very popular TV serial with mixed elements of soap opera, comedy, and drama, and it aired from 1978 to 1991. It was created by Radio Television Belgrade, and it is considered to be the most successful TV show ever produced in Yugoslavia. As a story about ordinary Yugoslav family, it picked up the rapid political and economical changes that took place in post-Tito uh, Yugoslavia during the late 80s and beginning of 90s.
Pare. 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 Sparama, spara, saparama, na parama, 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 pare, 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 Novac. 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 Novac.